Welcome back. This is Sad Songs in Your Basement. I am Jeff. And this is episode seven, which we're going to start off with, uh, with apologies and corrections. Um, that last episode was a little shambolic. Um, I recorded it over many days, and and um, and and I'm not a very careful person. Um, but I was rewatching it and kind of going, "Oh man!" Like I didn't say the name of the the book correctly. Once I did, once I didn't. But it's called Humankind, the book by Rutger Bregman. And there was a part where I started to talk in there about um, the um, kind of founding myths of the people are evil story and his debunking of them. And then I, I started a list and didn't do anything with it and seemed to have implied that the Stanford prison experiment was run by Milgram, which is not what happened. Um, Stanford was run by uh, Zimbardo and Milgram ran the giving people electric shocks for making mistakes, that experiment. Um, and his were where the notes were really revealing. And Lombardo was just a, a sham, a scam artist um, and a liar. I'm a, I'm a fuzzy thinking person. I always have been. And for a long time, I thought that was a real problem, but I don't anymore. I'm, I don't remember signifiers for things very well. Um, if they mean something to me, I do. But if it's just a name, uh, that's on something almost arbitrarily. I rarely remember those. I don't have much of a mind for it. And it, um, that interferes when I'm arguing with people because I, I, you know, I, I get the, the details, the details wrong on who said what, but I'm pretty good at seeing ideas and, 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 uh, general, you know, epochal grooves. Um, and, uh, and I don't worry about it that much. That's something I learned how to do because, uh, I am not the only person in the world. So, we could work together on conversations. They're not actually contests most of the time. Um, and I, that comes from how I am as a teacher too. So I'm, I'm going to explain a little bit about that, but um, I am going to make more of an effort to, to have the book in front of me when I'm talking about it and, and um, prepare a little more because it's unfair to have to make corrections and it's, it's a bummer to put bad information out there. I, I do have a structure for what I want to investigate in terms of the school question. Um, and I'd like to explain that to you. So I have, I, I was supposed to be on a sabbatical next year. Uh, I don't know if I've said that in this show, but, um, obviously that's canceled because we were going to travel and, and I was going to write and, and draw and stuff. And, um, obviously we're staying home now. I, it's kind of why I started the podcast in March because I had been thinking about doing something with this next year anyway. Anyway, I had envisioned a, a book about school possible that after this I might take what I've sketched here and, and, and flesh it out into something else. Here's my, my premise, okay? Schools are are not from God. They We didn't inherit them from some supreme being. They just were designed at a point in history to serve that era. And then they evolved um, and pretty much thoughtlessly evolved <clears throat> as a whole. Small aspects of, of school all evolved according to whatever was going on in their era and the people who were engaging with the ideas. And what it is now is an extremely complex system that is not well thought out. And it's kind of stupid to pretend it is. Um, that's, I see it that way. Um, and I see the ever present trend of, of the past trying to control the future and the old trying to control the young as a big part of the problem. Um, because like, like churches, schools are institutions that grow very, very slowly. They're kind of conservative in their nature because the oldest people are the most powerful and people who are most um, fully converted by the indoctrination, they, they, they're they making the choices. And of course, they're not questioning anything. So schools can get really stuck. So of course, when they started, they held the ideas of the time. And if you're going back to when, when our modern school system um, was starting here, the, the popular one that everybody goes to, uh, you know, they held ideas that were really just the norm at the time of racism and sexism and, um, uh, suspicion and, and, um, coercion, factory stuff, right? Like bells for when to respond. There's no mechanism in this system that just evolved from an old thing into now where it has very poor fit with culture and there's no mechanism for going back through it and getting rid of the dead weight or or, or there, there might be a mechanism but it's very very slow so i think there's kind of three essential topics to this conversation 
if you're, if you're trying to figure out what would make a good, how should schools be, um, then they have to include these basic core areas. One being, how do people really learn? Um, which we knew nothing about when schools were founded. Um, and now we know quite a bit more about. And then the other question that that everybody really can can contribute to the answer is is what do people need to know if if school's supposed to build good citizens uh, or or yeah good citizens good units of the polity what do they need to know the downside of this would be what what are schools now and how do they work now and what's wrong with them but the positive side that I'll try and focus on is what can schools be what could schools be that would be different um, from how they are now so. Uh, I think those are the three big buckets, and then hopefully some kind of structure will will show itself as as we sketch it out. My background as a teacher is weird, and so my perspective, I believe, is weird. But um, uh, since I was 19, uh, I have been working with kids who have learning exceptionalities. And that's a terrible phrase I just used, but honestly, a lot of the jargon in education is terrible and I have some pretty strong ideas about about using a word like disability to describe um, something that's not a disability necessarily. Um, I'll get into all that. I think I'll talk a lot about that because I, I know a lot about it. But um, but at, at core, my whole time working with children, um, either in social work early or then as a teacher later, was working with kids who don't fit the system. I work in a very progressive school, uh, which I'm not, I won't name here and I won't discuss any specifics of because this podcast has no affiliation with them and, and um, um, I don't want to cause any stir. Um, I love the place. I've been there for a long time and uh, it really allows for, for real teaching. And so my whole time with kids has been in this progressive non-standard form which which suits my personality i'm a non-conformist by religion and uh uh i became a teacher specifically because i hated school and i thought i could do a better job than pretty much everybody i'd had uh not you mrs jensen uh and not you sue um i never fit in i didn't enjoy it i felt not only, I, you don't feel coerced when you're a kid because everything was, at least it was when I was a kid, but I think probably still, everything is coercion, right? You don't decide what to do every day when you're a kid. It was just something you went to. So I mostly found it just sort of um, emotionally, just alienating, I would say is the word for it. I just didn't know why we were learning what we were learning or why other people were better at it or why I didn't fit in or anything. Uh, and I just could give a shit the whole time. I really hated school. Uh, it occurred to me that you could have a good teacher every year if we knew how to do it. Um, anyway, that's it. Let's see what's happening on the lake. Welcome back to the lake. <laughs> I am hilariously being heckled by some little kids uh, who are just doing it on a boat from a distance. Let me show you. It's pretty fun. <laughs> So one time I'm right over here, just on the other side of this thing. And it's very calm, so I don't have to really do anything. Like I don't have to do much to maintain just one position. And so I'm meditating. And I'm sitting with my eyes closed, just listening to the sounds and, you know, just vaguely keeping like one eyelid a little open so that I can um, not drift anywhere. I'm doing that for like, 10 minutes or something in the sun and feeling really good and then I open my eyes a little bit and I see that I'm looking like directly at a couple on on this pier over here uh, and the man is taking pictures of the woman and she's taken off her clothes and as I see them and kind of comprehend what I'm looking at I also see them see me and then it looks like I've been sitting still in my boat just staring at them <laughs> so I was so embarrassed you know I like but I was also pissed off to have my um, my meditation disturbed. I just turned the boat around and just put my back to them. Like, fuck that. I'm not making a big effort. I'll show them I'm not looking. And then I'll fucking finish my meditation. And then I hear some splashing. 
and I try to ignore it for a bit, and then I open my eyes, and I am looking directly at two ducks fucking, which I've never seen before. He's, he keeps pushing her head into the water as he's... That's, that's fucking rude, dude. Um, anyway, they they finish up and paddle off, and I just watched them. I watched the whole time. Uh, if you're not from Toronto, you might not know. These islands across from, uh, you know, the urban center are occupied. They are the actual, um, not the original people. Right after the indigenous people uh, were wiped out by um, smallpox, etc., um, and bullets and stuff, um, a group of wizards moved in. Uh, short little wizards, or 5'4". And uh, they practice witchcraft and warlock craft. They enjoy boating. There's like a, there's a witch bridge. Uh, they call it that because ladies only. Um, Um, let's wrap it up. Uh, here's a song. I'll see you next time. Uh, take care of yourselves out there. I think I'm going for a walk now. I feel a little unsteady. Don't want no one to follow me, except maybe you. I could make you happy, you know, if you weren't already. And I could do a lot of things. I do. I prefer the worst of you It's too bad you had to have a better half And she's not really my type But I think you two are forever And I hate to say it But you're perfect together So fuck you And your untouchable face Fuck you for existing in the first place. Who am I? I should be fine for your touch. Who am I? Three thirty in the morning. Gas tank will be empty soon. Neon sign on your eyes is rubbing elbows with the moon in a safe haven of sleeplessness where the deep fryer is always on and radio is counting down the top 20 country songs and out on the porch the fly strips waving like a flag in the wind and I don't look forward to seeing you again you'll look like a photograph of yourself taken from Seeing you 
I'm so perplexed What was I thinking? What will I think of next? Where can I hide? In the back room there's a lamp That hangs over the pool table And when the, the fan is on It swings gently side to side And in the changing constellations Of the balls as we are playing I see Orion and I say nothing The only thing that I can think of saying Is fuck you and your untouchable face And fuck you for existing in the first place mm, Fuck me that I should be vying for your touch Cause who am I? Want you so 